heard in the news, I read in the news, my name is Lorraine Don Anderson, and I'm an employee of the Ministry of Justice. And my husband and I have been on separation for some time in the uh, court of you know, the civil law court for divorce. And last year, I had to leave home due to the constant domestic violence on his part rendered towards me. And I've been away from home, but I've been denied access to the kids on numerous and numerous occasions to a point where that um, communication, I don't even have any form of communication between the kids and I. Because he sees phone from the kids when he feels like he gives he gives the phone back. When he feels like he takes the phone away and he tells the children straight, I don't want you to go talking to your mother. My daughter told me that on several occasions when I asked, but what happened to your phone when I called you? I can get you. She said, Mommy, to be honest, Daddy took the phone away from us and told us that he doesn't want us talking to you to have any form of phone or communication with you. He even went to the extent of writing to our different school, the Covenant Literary Center and the Aware International School on GSA Road, informing the school administration that I should not be allowed to go on the campus, I should not even attend PTA meetings, I should not have anything to do with the children. And the, and the, the two proprietors told him that um, they cannot do that because honestly, since the kids were born and, and have been in their schools, it is the mother that they know. They have not seen him attending any, any PTA meetings. They have no you know, uh, jurisdiction. They cannot stop me or, or any parent from going to see the children. So that did not hold, and he got angry. Of recent, our divorce case has been um, in the civil law court, uh, presided over by Josh Naming Grayson. And due to the tension with the divorce of, of what has been happening between us, Josh Grayson advised our both counsels that um, after the divorce, when the divorce ends, then we'll go back to the court and discuss the children. But um, I should have access to the children to go and see the children. And I've been going to see the children once in a while. When I have chance, I leave work because I have this, you know, sometimes I talk to my boss to let me leave a little bit early to go and see the children because I don't want to be there when he comes home because I, I know how he can behave, how he's very violent and temperamental. So I always go there. And when I go there to see the kids, the kid said when he comes from work, he will ask the mother came here and will tell him yes. And that's the only means I have to see them because I don't talk to them. I don't know how those kids are. That's the hurtful part. When they are sick, I don't know because he, Andrew, doesn't talk to me at all. He doesn't talk to me at all. There is no there is no communication, nothing of the sort. He wanted he wanted the nurse never to ever hear that I called the house on her phone to talk with the children. That's what he did. So the kids have to sneak out of the compound sometimes just to use people on the street phone to call me and say, hello, mommy, how are you? Or my niece, most of the times when she go to school, she asks her sponsor for his phone and she calls me to say hi. My daughter does the same when she goes to school. So on Thursday, I went to see the kids as usual after work. So when I went in the yard, the kids were upstairs. And when I went, I called them, I said, oh, your B6 here, you know, I started making phone with them. I said, your B6 has come. Then the nurse came on the porch and said, eh, 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 my boss may say, when you come here, eh, the train should come downstairs to you. If I'm telling you that you come here, I should tell you to leave the yard. I said, what? He said that. She said, yes. And the two girls came downstairs to me. They told the nurse that we'll go downstairs and see our mother. So the two girls came and I said, okay, let me call him. I was so irritated. I took my phone and I called him. He canceled the call. When I looked, I sent, I, I sent him a message saying that um, you're always doing this because I overlook it and I don't and I don't do anything to you. But that's why you keep that's why you have the guts to keep doing it. But this time around, I will stay here and I will see my children. When I'm ready to leave, I will leave. Anything you want to do, do it. He responded, he, ab he abused words, which I don't want to say on, on air. The train came downstairs to me. And he said, when I come there, you will see what I will do to you. He abused and said some nasty words. So the girls came down. At that time, my son had not come from school. because He comes from school on the school bus. So the girls and myself were sitting, sitting down with the other kids in the yard. I was asking them about their school, their activities, and stuff like that. So by in the evening hours, when I looked, he came. He came, he parked his car 
got out of the car, came to where the kids and I was sitting downstairs. I don't go upstairs to his apartment. I don't go there because I don't want any problem. The yard is very big, and that's where I lived since I was someone who is nine years old now, was three, and since he was three months old. So I have friends in the yard who are who and who are, are other neighbors that I know very well. So when I go there, I sit on one of them push, and the train and I talk. That's what I do. He came, excuse me, I'm on air, get an ass out of the yard. I said, I'm not leaving the yard. I came to see my children, and when I'm ready to go, I will leave. He told the two girls, reach out, Shelly, get your asses upstairs. The girls said, they were not going. They were going to sit in. I said, y'all sit down. I came to see y'all. Before the words would even come out of my mouth, my husband started beating on me. And it's, it's not the first time. You know, the second time, but you see sometimes when people are married, as well, we are from the old school, when things happen, we start to keep it to ourselves and push and push things on the rock. My, great, my grandmother, uh, peace be to her ashes, she died going on this ground, not knowing many, 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 many things that were happening in my marriage. I shielded my husband from my family, from society, from his work, from everything. I made it, I made it appear like he was this perfect husband and I had this perfect marriage that didn't have any issues. So that's how it has been. When I filed in for divorce on February, I re when I reported my my, my violence. He told his lawyer was ever telling me in court that you cannot prove anything because there is no police report. There is nothing that my client has been violent. And I told him, I said, Bob, you are right. Because if I had been reporting it, I would have had a, I, I, I will have I will have had a folder full of complaints from police stations, from courts, but you are perfectly right for saying so. So he started hitting on me with his blows, his 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 feet started kicking me all on my sides and took out his belt. His belt, my people, Andrew Anderson took out his belt from his trousers, his heavy leather belt that he usually buys in America and Europe. He took it out and beat it on me. Beat it on me, his children's mother. He beat me as if to say I was a rogue that they had caught stealing. Like how you beat a rogue that has been stealing and has been finally caught. That's how he beat me or dragged me out of the yard. The, th the thing that hurt me most, the two girls came to stand there to stop him. And he pushed them aside and continued hitting me. His violence has always occurred in the presence of the kids. That's the hurtful part. He has never done it behind the back. So the kids have witnessed all this violence all their lives. They have witnessed it. I, I, I remember one incident last, uh, I think this year, February, he traveled. I want to see the kids as, as usual. My daughter had an assignment. She asked me to help her to do so. I did it at my office and I took and I typed it and I took it to her in even to present the school. While she was watching our downstairs, she was, you know, troubling me, scaring me hard, I'm telling me, oh, you, you must stay at me. I'm missing you. My son, and I thought he was eight years ago. He turned nine on March 26. My son was upstairs. I didn't know that that little boy had been observing things, but he's a quiet child and he doesn't say anything. He was upstairs and he told his sister, he said, Rachel, start giving mommy hard time. You know, that you already coming from the airport. I don't want that you to come and beat on mommy. Let her go, please. Richard burst into tears. I stood and the tears just rolled down my eyes for my eight-year-old son, who had never said anything about it, who had never said anything, could stay up there and say those words to his sister. I quietly left the yard. So after beating me up, he dragged me out of the fence, slammed the gate in my face, but my shoes had left in the yard. So I said, I need my shoes. And I had a security. The security begged me and said, Sir speech, I'm begging you. The two other inside begged me when they saw that I was, I didn't even know I was even bleeding until I tasted my, my blood in my mouth. The blood was dripping down, down my face. I didn't even know because I was so furious and I was so hurt. I was like, because the anger that Anderson beat me with, I don't know, like, I can't even describe the anger I saw. In him. It was unlike any other time that he had ever laid his hands on me beat me up, dragged me out, out of the yard, and I came and stood outside the fence. I thought he had dragged me out. I refused to leave. I just stood there, and the tears could not even come out because the pain was too much. The tears could not even come out. I stood there. Some people were, some people were outside, the, outside the fence. They came. They were trying to talk to me. They said, oh, man, just forget it. Just go. When they may come outside the fence again and see you here, it will be something else. So we beg you. 
Jesco. I said, no, I will not go. I, 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 I want to stay here more and see if I can even see the kids again and tell them to, to come down. Because right in that time, the nurse, his nurse and the housemaid came down and she was crying. She came to the kid. She held me. She said, Mama, I'm so sorry. Oh, in the beach, I'm so sorry. She was crying. I said, well, how are the kids? She said, honestly, they're trying not to the they trying to put them up in their room and they are crying and he is shouting at them to shut their mouths. I was like, what? She said, yes, he's not even calming them down to say sorry or something. He's telling them to shut their mouths. Right in that time, I asked a boy who is uh, one of the tenants' son in, in the yard to take my pictures. But this time around, when, I, when I'm reporting my case, I wanted evidence. I don't want for anybody to, to tell me when I go and leave my complaint, I don't want anybody to, to tell me I don't have evidence of anything. So I took my pictures, the bottom of my pictures, fine, and I saved my pictures. But I still did not leave the yard. I was still hanging around when I looked at went. I was still outside the fence. When AC went, I saw him, he and his uncle, in the car, in the car and they left. As soon as they left, I wanted to go up in the yard and call the children to play that brave mind. But when I look at school, we have it. you see Gordon? God is good though. My daughter, Rachel Anderson, she came running down outside the fence to see if I was still around. And she had no idea that I was there, but she breathed the stone. As soon as her father left, drove out of the yard, Rachel came down the stairs and they took to her. Your, your mother is standing outside the gate. She came uncontrollably crying. She hugged me and my, my daughter, who, who I supposed to tell her if it will be fine. She was the one holding me, hugging me and crying to me and said, Mommy, it will be okay. Mommy, it will be okay. I just, <laughs> I just could not even cry because the hurt and the pain was so much. And I was, I thought she, she consoled me. My sight, everything is, is hurting me. My, 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 the right side of my job till now, I, I can't even chew on it. My knee, I don't even know what is even happening because I've not gone for a third medical checkup 